Well, in this video, um, Atheist Sunday School is, it's of course, the Church Covenant Sanctification. Church Covenant Sanctification. Of course, I'm not going to read all of it, just like all the other ones. Introduction. The Christian life and all things in it can be put into two columns. One column is self, called self. And the other is called God. From gigs saved, these things in the Christian life are mostly found under the self. Columns such as vocabulary, money, time, talent, eyes, ears, etc. As a Christian grows, those things should move from under the self column and relocate under the God column. In other words, the Christian begins to set apart more of his life and the things in it for God, and he dedicates more and more to Christ. He becomes more sanctified. The word sanctification in the Bible actually means set apart for God. Things were sanctified in the Bible. Food. 1 Timothy 4, 3-5. Gift laid at the altar, Matthew twenty three seventeen. Gold adorning the temple, Second Chronicles five one. Of course, you can go online to King James Bible Online dot org to you know check out these things. God's name, Luke eleven two. God's son, ten thirty six. The believer, X twenty thirty two. I mean, of course, you don't want me to read all those. That's why I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to actually read them. You can go to kingjamesonline.org and you'll see them. The Christian has been sanctified. When a person is saved, his spirit is sanctified or set apart. This does not mean that the entire body, body is set apart to God. It simply means that when a person is saved, God sets his spirit apart for eternal life. Believers often use the word saint when it comes to the same root word as the word sanctification. It has been said sainthood or sanctification is not an attainment, but rather the state to which God by grace calls simple men and in which they begin their course as Christians. Just so you know, the Bible does mention saints, so it, you know how, I'm sure some of you know the Catholic Church deems people saints. None of that is biblical. In the Bible, it's pretty clear that if, these Christians, you know, for these Christians, that if you're saved, you're you're a saint. That's what basically, because sanctification. Of course, there's no such thing as being saved, but you know that's how they believe. That's what it says in their book. It's also been said sanctification is a relationship with God, which men enter with God, into which men enter. By faith into Jesus Christ, there is the spirit, the life, and the body. There are sanctified one at a time. The spirit is sanctified at conversion. The life is being sanctified day by day, and the body will be sanctified completely at the rapture. Christian's life is sanctified gradually. In the New Testament, sanctification speaks of the separation of the believer from the world and its ways. And that's true. That's why I make videos about liberal Christians. Because, you know, they pretty much want to still, I mean, let's face it, liberal Christians are smart enough, I give them credit, they're smart enough to know that most of that Bible is baloney. Okay, they figure that out. But here's the problem, though. They'll accept things that their book is against, which is, you know, okay. But if you're going to claim, if you're going to be friends with somebody, and think about it, if you're never in agreement with that person, are you really friends? Think about it. Would you be friends with someone that you just don't agree on with anything? So why are they Christians in the first place? If they don't believe the stuff in their book, you don't believe in the flood, you don't believe in uh, creation and all that nonsense that the Bible says happens, you know, you don't believe that the Joshua stopped the sun, which of course is stupid, but you know, I made videos on some of this stuff too, you know. <laughs> If you don't believe that stuff, which you shouldn't, anyways, why would you still call yourself a Christian? It makes no sense. But some people, I think, they just can't let go of that idea. They want to believe that there is a God. Maybe there is a God, but I wouldn't get too excited about thinking that the Christian God or the Muslim or Jewish God is real. 
the body will be sanctified at the rapture. First John 3, 1 through 3, you can read that if you want to. On becoming like him, the Christian will then be set apart to God completely. The Christian should be able to say, I was sanctified when I was saved. I am being sanctified as I live for Christ and grow in grace, and I shall be sanctified when he comes again. Basically, these are the tenets of sanctification, past, present, and future. The most common error concerning sanctification is the idea that it is an instantaneous event after salvation. Which they're trying to tell you here, and I'm going to read the paragraph. You know, some people, they get saved, but they continue to drink or smoke or cuss and stuff. But slowly, they stop. I work with this woman, claims to be a Christian. She cusses, and she's a very nasty type of person, too, if you meet her. I mean, very, very, very nasty. I won't have to see her again after this summer, thankfully. But she's a, supposedly a Christian. And really, if you're a Christian, it just means you believe in the Bible, you believe in Jesus Christ. That's how we will see it. But they try to make, you know, if you ever been to church, been a Christian, you know, they'll say, well, we're Christians, they're not. That's not a true Christian, or my God isn't like that, or that was the Old Testament. You know, they have all that weird stuff. You know how it is. Now, here we go. Some believe that one becomes a Christian by faith in Christ, and that there comes a second work of grace that's called sanctification. At this time, they think they become free from willful sin and are completely and wholly set apart to God. The tragic thing is that most of these people define sanctification to mean they have quit doing some things they should not be doing. It is interesting that in the Bible, sanctification did not mean set apart from something. It meant being set apart to something. The furnishings of the tabernacle and temple were sanctified. This does not mean that they were set apart from being used in the tavern or nightclub. It just and just was set apart in the field somewhere. It meant they were set apart for service for God. The furnishings were used for God. It's not enough it's not enough not to be used for Satan, each Christian needs to be set apart as vessels and tools of use for God. Conclusion, what is in your life needs to be sanctified. What needs to be set apart, not only for wrong, but also to right. It is not sanctification of one to quit using his eyes to read bad literature. Of course, bad literature is anything that is against the Bible. So basically science, you know, anything like Richard Dawkins, Charles Darwin, all that stuff would be bad literature. Of course, anything Jane Austen and the, and all these other people, you know, all these great works of literature, Shakespeare, you know, that stuff. A sanctified tongue is not one that has just quit swearing. It is one that has started talking about Christ. Sanctified feet are not those that simply do not go to bad places. They are the feet that lead to God's house and to places that are proper and right. Well, that's it. Feel free to like, subscribe, feel free to leave a comment, or watch any of my other videos. Thanks.